Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm about to show you guys how to make a character selector from uh, what's, what's the game called? I think it's something, something battleground. The strongest battlegrounds. That's what's called. <clears throat> it's it's actually interesting. Like someone had asked me to make this. Like someone requested a video, but like like I mean, like a few days beforehand, someone asked me to like just make this and stuff for something else. <clears throat> And stuff so i already had it made so i was like all right bet i could just record it and stuff so shout out to whoever uh, suggested it in the in my discord link to join my discord by the way is in the description so y'all should for sure join up at the moment we 50 subscribers away from hitting a thousand like you know what i'm saying we real close i appreciate y'all for real so let's get straight into it all right <coughs> uh what's the name so i already have everything uh pre-made because i uh yeah I, I didn't have that much trust in me remembering me remembering the full script um, but uh, what's it called? So head on over to replicated storage. Let's get this. Let's get this done first. First things first. You're gonna need a remote event. You can name that remote event character selector event, right? Then you're gonna want to insert a folder called character skill sets. If you played Strongest Battlegrounds, which I'm assuming you have, because more than likely that's why you're watching the video, you know uh, there there are three different characters or four. I think maybe four. But the point is there are different characters and. And they have different skills. Now, obviously, these are just empty tools. These are empty tools, there's no like, no actual combat, actual scripted. But the point is, just generally, like, there are skills for each character folder and stuff like that, right? So this is just a way to organize it, and also a way to retrieve it when it comes time for a player selecting a character. So you would just have one one folder that holds all the skill sets, then each character, and then the skills inside of the character. And you would have that in replicated storage, or you could keep it in server storage. It's really up to you. Then head on over to Starter GUI, and you have your drop down. You have your drop down GUI, right? Uh, not gonna lie, I don't know why I don't see it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why I don't see it. I should be able to see it. Anyway, uh, oh wait, I think I know why I don't see it. Wait, if I, oh no, never mind. Okay, I think it'll show up when I click play. But anyway, so I pretty much uh have a GUI. Insert a server script into the GUI. And insert a button like I have like the button and then I put the frame inside of the button right so I named it drop down button I uh, made the background just black uh, 0.5 transparency looking it was halfway transparent I tried to make it just like the other uh, default Roblox buttons like the chat button and stuff like that they all you should probably know what I'm talking about and then here here's the position and size I set it to and everything and then yeah then the text and everything C so that like C you know for character select and stuff so players will, will click it and then it'll uh it'll open it up and stuff then ui corner then my drop down frame with my character select buttons right and then i just put corners just to make it look nice right and a variable to, to pretty much to keep track of whether or not the ui is enabled or not so pretty much this is the script reference the uh remote event character select event then made a variable current class this is the this is the player's current class. You could also just have this variable. Um, you could just make a variable and put it inside the GUI and also have it as that, but I just decided to do it on the script. So pretty much when a player um, clicks the drop down button, it'll then play these tweens, depending on whatever the variable's value is set to. If the UI is enabled, then it will uh, tween it to where like it like it appears, like it becomes, like it becomes, uh, it's not transparent anymore. And then it'll do the vice versa for uh, if it, is enabled or if it isn't enabled i should say yeah, and then down here pretty much this is this like the main thing right so pretty much when a player clicks one of the character select buttons and stuff uh we get all of the children of the character skill select so pretty much getting all of these characters they're gonna say if v2 v2 right make sure your naming is like just as mine. you need to make sure your naming is just like mine or you need to change or you need to know how to change the name yourself because naming is very important so pretty much if v2 pretty much one of these if the name so character one for example dot dot then i add in the button is equal to v dot name these are the v's these are the v's so y'all see what i'm saying character one then you add on the button and stuff that's how you know if it matches or not and stuff right then we shoot the player the character and then pretty much you got to check of course to make sure that uh the character is at max health because you don't want them switching to another character well unless your game has that but majority of games don't want people switching to different characters when they're like low health about to die or something so you're just pretty much making sure that their health is equal to their max health or you could also just make it like if they have over 90 health or something you know 
and you do player load character, which is pretty much like it's, it's a way to reload the character in a way. It'll clear out their uh, the player's inventory and everything. Check, you're updating the current class string value to whatever the current class is, and then a little wait. And then pretty much you get all the children, all, and, then, and then pretty much the children would be the skills of whatever character, right? And then you just clone over, you clone over all the skills, put it in the player's backpack, and then you tween it so that the uh, the frame uh, disappears pretty much. So yeah, I'll hit play and I'll just go ahead and show you guys. Now it should still, it should be here. It's not okay. There, yeah, there we go. I don't know why it was there before, but yeah, as you guys can see, like now it looks very similar, but I know the positioning is a little off. But yeah, you'll, you'll get the point though. That looks similar because because that's actually my first time seeing games do this where like it matches this one. I was like, oh, that's that's actually that's hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so when I left click, it appears like that. You know, pretty nice and stuff like that. Oh, well, I should probably change the position a little bit, but it don't really matter. But yeah, if I click character one, I'll re it'll reload my character. I'll get my skills one by one, and it disappears in the background. And then yeah, that's how you pretty much have all your skills, and that's all you got to do. I uh, hope this video was helpful. As always, I will have the scripts in the description if you guys need them. If you guys need help or anything, uh, link to join my Discord can find the description as well as my Roblox group. Yeah, I appreciate y'all for watching. Let's get to a thousand subscribers, and I'll see you guys. Appreciate y'all.